Hello everybody, Starman is in, and welcome to the first video of Fire Emblem February. So today I'll actually be answering questions brought to you by, uh, brought to you by Tumblr actually, but these are some really good questions. And if the video seems like it's going to go too long, it's going to get split into two parts, where part one, what you're seeing now, will be today, and then part two will be tomorrow. But, 30 questions for this little bit, so that's why I'm saying that it might go into two parts. But, first question, how did you find Fire Emblem? Funny story on how I actually managed, I mean, yeah, I saw Fire Emblem in Super Smash Bros., but that's not what got me... I mean, that's how I found it, but how I, how I, well, understood that it was there, but how I really found it was through a cousin of mine who is, like, little, like, between the age of between me and him is a little over a year. So, the thing is, when he used to live a lot closer to me, like, we were in the same area of the state, instead of him being in South Carolina... Um, he'd come over to my grandparents' house once a month for a weekend. And the thing is, also, at his house, he was not allowed to play video games for the longest time. Because his mom was not a nice woman. My grandmother loved spoiling all of us. So, just to make sure that every grandchild was happy, she'd hide the fact that... Uh, that he was playing video games at her house, and she didn't care. That's one of the good things I will say Grandma did nice on. She 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 did her best to try to make sure all her grandkids were happy. She didn't always treat everybody else better, I mean. But that's a different story. Anyway. But. But the thing is, he found Fire Emblem. And he's talking to me kind of how awesome it is. So... I get the chance to play it when he's not, I got the chance to play it while he wasn't there because he was only there for a weekend once a month. A lot more time to really get stuff done. And I found the game to be a lot more interesting even though I was extremely bad at it the first time around. Then again, I think everybody gets is really bad at it. It's kind of bad at Fire Emblem when they first start playing. Unless they have somebody with them to help them out. So, it, it is pretty nice. And eventually the thing is, I get more interested in Fire Emblem than he really ever did. And here I am, the great Fire Emblem fan of today, kind of, you know, less than a month away till Fates. And I'm really looking forward to Fates. No matter what anything that has been said on the news... Because unless they really, really dramatically change something that affects the story or affects how the game gets played majorly is not an optional thing, I probably won't get mad at, you know, Nintendo for doing this stuff. I may be a little confused of why they may change things. But I'll get more mad at fans when they get pissy about everything, but that's also another video. Anyway, question number two. My favorite pairing. This is a little bit interesting of a question because they mean favorite pairing, but they leave it pretty open as, like, my favorite friendship. But, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're talking about romantic pairing. And I really don't get into those shipping wars with people. But if I had to do any romantic pairing, if I really had to name one that I really, really like, it's Elwood and Ninian. I mean, it's kind of saying you should probably do this, but it's not to the point like it is with Krom and Sumia in Awakening. It's a lot more subtle, and they're just being so nice to each other. And you could tell that the love is kind of there. And it's not forced like it is with Krom and Sumia. And with Elliwood and Ninian, it's, it's nice. And it really helps, even if they don't actually get the A support, 
for that. I mean, it's still hints and stuff. And what goes on in the plot helps Ella Wood's character. Even, even if they don't reach A rank, what happens no matter what you do in storyline, it helps Ella Wood's character. So, very nice. So, when in, so question number three, what incarnation of the Fire Emily is your favorite and what would you do with it? Well, my favorite incarnation um, is actually Leheron's medallion, which is interesting because this is a medallion filled with a lot of chaotic energy, and it causes most people to go crazy. I would do nothing with it because I would rather leave it to the royal herons, rather leave it to Rayson, Leanne, and Raphael, because... They're some of the ones who could very well keep it under control. I'm not, I probably would be somebody who'd go berserk with, if, if I grabbed a hold of Laeron's, Manel, Laeron's medallion. It's not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. Question number four. Favorite character. That is a very hard subject to narrow down. I love so many of the different characters from different games. Hector and Ellawood to to people like Har and Ike to the fact that I even kind of like Jerome in Awakening and there's some like for like Joshua and there, there, there's so many characters I can't just name just one because I like a whole lot of the cast. Question number five, favorite lord, that, that honor, that honor definitely, 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 definitely goes to Hector. Because Hector and I are very similar in personality. We don't really like dealing with the politics of things. We'd rather avoid it, but when we have to, we're going to, you know, kind of state our own opinion and when push comes to shove, friends matter a whole lot, and you'll do a whole lot to try to protect your friends and to try to help save your friends. And that's how Hector and I are pretty similar in personality. The fact that he can wield an axe pretty well is a nice touch on top. So I really, really like Hector just because of how close in personality we are in a lot of ways. That and Hector was the inspiration for Ike. Good job, Hector. So how many Fire Rooms do you have slash have you played is question number six. I've played all the Fire Emblems that have come out in English. Um, I currently in possession of five. Awakening, Path of Radiance, Radiant Dawn, and then I've got Sacred Stones and... Um, Fire Emblem 7 on Wii U Virtual Console. So I own five out of the six titles. The sixth title, Shadow Dragon, I don't want to play ever again. I really didn't like it. Favorite game of the series. See, Fire Emblem, you know, the first one that we got out in English, which is how I got introduced to Fire Emblem. Seventh entry in the series is my favorite Fire Emblem. Path of Radiance is a pretty close second. Because both of them have a good story, good characters, good mechanics and all that stuff. Leaves a decent challenge. It's pretty good. And I really like both of them. But Fire Emblem 7 comes out on top. So that is my favorite game in the series. Question number 8. Hardest last boss battle. Quite a few of the bosses are pretty hard. I mean, they are pretty hard. Ashnard from Path of Radiance definitely comes to mind. Um, the first one that definitely comes to mind, because he's difficult, no matter what the difficulty. Because very few people can actually hurt him. Like Ike and the royal you bring with you. Uh, well, to Barn. Nisala might be able to if it's a lower difficulty. I don't know if he can on higher difficulties. And Gifka, who, you know, the Canagus's shadow. But anyway, 
Um, and then Ike. But the thing is about Ashnard, if you play hard mode, you get Berserk Ashnard, who is even worse. But it's only on hard mode, and it's definitely adds up the challenge difficulty. He's definitely one of the hardest, and the hardest one that I have got, I have played through. Because all the other ones are usually, you have the weapons, or it's a total grind fest. Like, you know, you just kind of grind it out and you'll be fine. Ashnard is not that. Ashnard is quite difficult. Even on normal. He can he could he can mop the floor with you if something goes wrong. And it makes him a pretty difficult boss. And then hard mode berserk Ashnard is even worse. So I definitely think he's an extremely di he he is definitely the hardest final boss battle for me that I've played. Least favorite level. That one's hard because I like a lot of the levels. But I guess one that really causes a lot of headaches, um, especially on harder difficulties, is... Oh, which one is it? I think it's the Lloyd version of Fort Bang Dolphins is not fun because... You've got a sword master wandering around in fog of war. That's definitely not a good one. I don't like that one. Um, trying to remember which uh, another Fire Emblem Seven map I really do not like going through, it, and it's a very early map too. It is um, the map where you fight Eric because he has a silver lance and he's a cavalier unit. I mean, sure, you have Hector, and most of the time he'll be able to handle Eric by himself. But the map is so slow and a slog fest, and it's kind of monotonous, and with a boss who can wreck most of your units. Like, besides Hector and Marcus, and possibly Oswin? But the person who has the best chance is either Marcus or Hector, because Oswin can't use Axis at that point. It's definitely very likely my least favorite level is that one, which is Ellywood Chapter 12, Hector Chapter 15. Or are they both Chapter 14? I think they're both Chapter 14. Either way, I do not like that level. It's the one I always dread to do. So, question number 10. Something you want to change in any of the games? Um, hmm. It's a little difficult, but I think there, there's one thing I think uh, recently that I know that I would want to change. And it's kind of a nitpicky thing because, just because we're taking a mechanic that's a little too broken and I'd rather make it something else, is, and it's with Awakening and it's a my, no, it's a major thing, is, well, there's two things I want to change in Awakening. First off, pair, I'd rather have the rescue feature than the pair up feature. Because that was a little too broken. And the other thing that I want to change is the um, stack caps. Like the stack caps were way too high. Even more so if you added limit breaker. And those are things I would definitely change to Awakening. And those are the only ones. Those are the ones that I have some of the complaints with. You know, and one of the other things I would definitely change um, is adding actual support conversations in Radiant Dawn. That that's that's one of the things I definitely change. Favorite level. Hmm. What is a level I always look forward to doing? Actually, it's the final level of Fire Emblem Seven because 
have how it's this good boss rush and the and the final battle music really helps it out so it's a good challenge and you're seeing and it's a nice boss rush to get up to the final to get up to Nurgle and then to lead up to the final boss which is the dragon and it's very very nice to just kind of go through this and to really earn your victory that way. I like that one a lot more than a lot of fav a lot of levels. That one's definitely my favorite. Question number 12, favorite class. It's a tie between the Woven Rider class and the Mage class. And to me, I really love dragons, and some of the Wyvern Riders mounts are dragons and not Wyverns, but technicalities. But either way, just to see a Wyvern or a dragon be a mount for a flying unit like that is very interesting. And <clears throat> the unit that made me really fall in love with those units was Har, uh, FE10 Har, by the way who really, really showed how good Wyvern Riders, Wyvern slash Dragon Riders can be. And then with the Mage units, I was always a fan of Magic. Just to see the Magic classes, and I like Fire, and I tend to like the Anima Magic more. Because, you know, the Fire, the Thunder, the Wind, and all that stuff. And just to love that class pretty easily came to, you know, Pent. Pent, man, one of the best pre-promotes around. You can't go wrong with Pent. And Pent really showed how good a magical unit can be. He, he really, really, really showed how well he could be. <sighs> Dave, oh, not Dave, the question 13. Which character do you relate with the most and why? Kind of already explained it with the, you know, the favorite lord because I said I relate the most to Hector. Because personality-wise, him and I fit pretty close together. Both pretty brash at times, a bit arrogant, we'll do whatever it takes to help our friends. Don't really like the politics, but we'll do what we have to do to make sure that that gets taken care of. And just... Just, you know, making sure everything is fine. Best designed character or artwork? Oh, gosh. I like a lot of the characters' designs. But it has to be something that stands out to really be good. And this might be just me, but I really like... Um, I really like Ike's Vanguard outfit the most, kind of, because that's the design I really like is Ike Van Vanguard Ike, which is a Radiant Dawn feature. You don't see that in Smash Bros. fan. You don't get to see Vanguard design Ike, but, you know, starting design Ike is nice, too. A lot of Ike's outfits, I really do like just what, what the clothing they put on Ike. I really do like the clothing they put on Ike, so I like, I like all of Ike's design. Well, okay, minus, minus the one in Awakening. Minus the one they did for Awakening. Didn't like the hero outfit on Ike, but everything else I do like. Oh, question 15. Favorite villain. Most of my friends know this one, but to anybody who doesn't know me that well, my favorite villain is Alvis from Fire Emblem 4. Just because of his story. And you see that this guy is one of the best known people in the thing. Very powerful, ma a very powerful magic user. Very destructive. But you find out more about him and he's got this little tragic fate because he's being blackmailed by a member of a dark cultist, a cult group, by the leader, because of his heritage. And he has to watch as all of this is going down because if it gets found out from anybody, 
about this dark heritage, he's going to get killed on the spot no matter if he's... No matter who he is, no, doesn't matter if he's Lord Alvis of Velthamer. He's got a bloodline of Laptusu. And I really should make a video kind of explaining uh, the Lopt sect and the Dead Lords. Because Fire Emblem Awakening was the first was not the first time we saw the Dead Lords. They came much sooner. Least favorite character. Like the most favorite character, the least favorite character is something that I just cannot, that I just can't choose just one. Because there are a lot of characters I don't like. Like, I don't like Ephraim in the beginning of Sacred Stones. He has to kind of mature into a role that makes it better. But um, another character I don't like is Shinon. I mean, he's a fairly decent unit, but he's also a complete dick to anybody not named Rolf. He's a complete dick to everybody who is not named Rolf. Sheenon. Sheenon's an ass. Complete ass and a complete racist. Irritates me a little. Actually, more than just a little, he irritates me a lot. Um. I guess I gotta go with Sheenon. Because nobody else really brings that much anger and hatred like Sheenon does. Which stat is my favorite? Um. Oh, gosh. I really cannot pick a favorite stat, because every stat is important in Fire Emblem. Every stat is important, and I cannot pick just one. Best storyline question for number 18. Um, even though my favorite game is 7... And Seven's got a good story, Path of Radiance has a good story, and Fire Emblem 4, Genealogy of the Holy War, or Sezinokefu. I think that's how you pronounce it. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. If I did not pronounce it correctly, I apologize. Because I was thinking of the name right off the top of my head. But all three of them are good storylines. So all three of them kind of the best storyline. Of course, goes to my favorite game because I, because it has the best storyline. That's the thing. Favorite weapon. Uh, I like the killer weapons a lot because of the critical hit rate, and they're nice. So they're like some of my favorite weapons to use. But favorite overall weapon. Um. I have to go with the R mods. The FE7 incarnation of the R mods. Going back to Hector, the man is wielding it with one arm. He's wielding a giant axe with one arm, and I'm like, okay, this man is awesome. Which is more of the reason why I like Hector. I also like the Ragnall because of the unlimited usage it gets it gives Ike. Which is nice. So, it, it is pretty okay. Prettiest cutscene. Oh, I know this one. This isn't from Seven. It's from it's from Path of Radiance. And it's where Rayson and Leanne restore the Serenus Forest. It, it is a heartwarming scene. And it's so pretty just to see something that was dull and lifeless spring back to life. It's very nice. I love it. And if you have not seen that scene, you should definitely see that scene. Which country would you live in? I'm not sure. Probably Crimea? Probably Crimea? 
Um, Gallia, if I could get into, if I could get in, like, to where I was kind of doing, like, a little trading thing with Canigus, like, if I could, you know, hang with Canigus sometimes, and kind of just really understand the culture of Gallia, of, you know, the Beast Lagoos. So it'd either be Crimea or Gallia. Um, maybe, maybe in the fairy territory, but I think, I think Crimea or Gallia would be where I def, like, like if there's a way for me to live in Gallia, I'd definitely live in Gallia more just to learn about the Beast Lagoos and their culture and all that stuff. Because I really want to understand the Lagoos more, like more than what the games told us. I definitely would want to live in Gallia if I could. And if I, if I was in that world. I'd want to live in Gallia, but if, you know, I didn't get the permissions and stuff to live in Gallia, I definitely would, then I'd definitely be in Crimea. i definitely live in Crimea. <sighs> Something silly. I don't know why I find this funny, but I find the line that Soren tells Shinon to steal from the dead on his own time to be one of my favorite lines. And I don't know why I just find it humorous for some reason. Uh, something epic. Oh, the, I, this goes back to actually an old, 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 old video of mine. Like one of my earliest videos in 2007 or 2008. Where it's, you see Joshua fighting a certain boss and he gets two crits on 3%. Like two crits, not in a row, but, but two out of the three he taxi did were criticals and both of them were three percent that's a very low chance of that happening and i was surprised and then of course all the comments are like why'd you make joshua an assassin i'm like i do what i want i'll make joshua an assassin if i feel like making joshua an assassin i don't always have to make him a sword master favorite sacred weapon well that is definitely the armods with the ragnar kind of behind but i've already explained why why I like our mods. Favorite archetype. The Cain and Abel archetype is definitely my favorite because I like seeing how the green and the red cavaliers interact with each other. And that's one of my favorite friendship pairings goes to a red green, a, a red green duo. Actually, two red green duos. Because I like Kent and Saint, but I also like Kieran and Oscar. Those are like my two favorite red green duos. Scene slash moment that made you go, aww. Oh. I think there was a moment in Radiant Dawn where Amy, who, uh, Largo and Khalil's adopted daughter, goes and calls Ronald Mr. Kitty Cat Man, and he just goes along with it and lets her you know, just pet him and all this stuff. And I find that to be extremely adorable. It, it is nice. Scene slash moment that made you rage quit. I guess when I have to start over chapters, when I'm like so close to the end of a chapter, and everything just collapses on top. Oh, oh, oh. I know one specifically. Um, I'm doing an Ike solo now in Fire Emblem 9 in hard mode. And I'm on chapter 12. The chapter you recruit Zahark and you need to get to the boat. Because Ike does not have enough strength to really shot shoot these guys. No, I failed that. Because... I had a sword break on me, so I couldn't kill the guy who was right in front of that. And the Black Knight got to Ike and killed him. That, that is probably the most rage quitty moment I had ever. I'm, a, I lost. I got a game over because I did not count how many usage of a weapon I had left. And that was very, I mean... That was very... It pissed me off. 
Uh, what should the next Fire Emblem be like if you designed it? Now, we're going to look past Fates because Fates is already designed and stuff like that. It just hasn't come out yet in English. And if I wanted to know everything about it, I could. But I'd rather play it. Anyway, the next Fire Emblem game, if I designed it, um, would play a little, would play more like the classic, like more classic Fire Emblems of the GBA times. But I take the chance to do support conversations with multiple people, like Awakening. I I love the idea of the fact that you could support so many people. You can get supports up to A with so many people. Because I loved, I, that's one of the few things about Awakening I really love. Um, but there'd be no reclassing. It'd just be, it play more like Classic Fire Emblem. It would have the story writing of 7 and 9. Or at least try to. But, it would have, it would have the support conversation. Just the wide variety of supports you can get. And kind of the way to gain the supports and all that stuff, like Awakening did. That's how I do. It. That's how I do it. It wouldn't just be strict classic stuff, cause mm -mm. I bring back the weapon weight and the speed penalties and stuff like that because it's an interesting stat to go by. And like I said, I tend to like to play stuff that plays like the old school games. That's nice. So, favorite official soundtrack song remix, um, Radiant Dawn, while it's not my favorite game, and it's definitely low on my list of plays if I was ranking everything, um, list of things that I do, it probably has the best soundtrack. Like, it has, it has a lot of good stuff. Especially some of my favorite tracks, like, Wheel and Corby, King of the Sky. Um, Raphael's Aria, Repose of Souls. There's a lot of good tracks in, like, almost all the tracks that they do use in Radiant Dawn are wonderful. If you've not heard Radiant Dawn's soundtrack, you should definitely listen to it. That's one of the few things about Radiant Dawn I'll be recommending, ever. And the last question, question number 30. Why do you like Fire Emblem? There's plenty of good reasons. The story, the characters, the mechanics, they're, they're all great. You get a good range of characters. There's no right or wrong way how to play this game. Kind of like Pokemon, there's no right or wrong way to build up a team of Pokemon there. There's no right or wrong, wrong way to build up a team of characters in Fire Emblem. Of course, some units are better than others. But, you get to learn about them and support conversations and all that stuff. You you really can get to bond with some of these characters. And there's just some great ways to interpret things. There's no wrong way to play Fire Emblem. And I really enjoy that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back in a couple more days with another another video for Fire Emblem February. I'll see you guys then.